So hi, this is Nadine from Good Doggy Obedience Training and Consultations, and today I'm going to do a video about the prong collar. Here, sit. I'm going to use Zeus, who's going to help me with the prong collar. So what I have in my hand right now is, no, no, it's my, he's tired, is a, an 18 inch prong collar. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to put it up under the chin and around the dog's head. What you're going to notice is, A, this collar is way too big. It's an 18 inch. For Zeus, I would only use a 14 inch. Okay, this is the biggest collar I will ever use on a dog, and the only dogs I would use this on would be a Great Dane, a Napoleon Mastiff, uh, maybe an American Bulldog if they're on the larger side, that you need a little bit of help with. Maybe, maybe an English Bulldog, it really depends, or a British Bulldog, it really depends on the girth around the neck um, and how powerful the, the dog is. However, you will notice that there will be dogs with larger prongs than this, and it's absolutely not necessary because you know you do not need that much metal to, to control a dog. You're supposed to be learning to communicate effectively so the dog is working for you, okay? So with this collar, you'll notice that all the prongs will have a swivel head. The swivel head is what you attach the leash to, okay? Now this collar is a slip, like a quick release. So it has a little tiny, um, I don't know what you call it, a little clip that clips onto one of these little links, right? You can clip it onto any of them, but really I like using the first one because it's the widest. And then you'll notice that they have a D-ring and the D-ring just keeps the pressure on both sides of the neck even, okay? So some people accidentally will attach the leash to the dead ring and then the collar won't work efficiently. It doesn't run smoothly. So right now you'll notice that there's smooth transitions, but if you were to use this, there's not smooth transitions because this is in the way. Okay, so always make sure that when you have the prong on, you are always putting the leash attached to the swivel part of the metal. Okay, and then as you can see in, in here, I can fit my entire, well, both of my hands, I can fit my entire hands in here which means it's entirely too big, okay? So you want this to be fairly snug, so I probably would have to take probably at least four of these contacts out, and then you're gonna just get it in place. It's gonna be a little bit hard to move, not completely smooth, but smooth enough that you can move it and put it into place when you put the, it on the dog, okay? Now, when you go to release this style of collar, it has a quick release on it, so then you're going to end up putting it through the hole and then bringing it back up and meeting the little clip and then putting it back in place, just making sure the, the thing is even. There you go. And then you've got your, your prong all set up, okay? That's the 18 inch and that's the quick release. There are these little... Um, prong collars so that you can do special orders. I would use this for maybe a, a four or five pound chihuahua. Um, sometimes you can use them for other little dogs, Italian greyhounds or whippets or something. It depends on how big the dog is. Um, but again, for these, whoops, these little tiny, tiny dogs, there are collars for those dogs as well. Same rules apply. The swivel head is what you attach the leash to. It has a little dead ring right there and then even pressure all the way around the neck, okay? Now the 14 inch is the one that I use the most. I use it for my 110 pound um, Doberman. It's a 2.25 millimeter. Um, and this is what typically I would use for a dog that requires a prong. And um, this would be maybe a Cocker Spaniel, maybe a Setter, um, a Golden Retriever, Doberman, maybe a German Shepherd. Um, Jack Russell, cattle dog, those types of breeds, um, those, well, the size of the dog is basically what I would use this size of collar for, okay? And puppies that are over five months of age, or, you know, four months, depending on their maturity, then I might use this, this size as well, okay? And that's just a regular one. Now, this one is the same. It's a 14-inch. It's a quite popular. So this one has a buckle. So sometimes people have a hard time um, opening and closing the contacts of the prong. Um, they might have arthritis in their fingers. They might just not be as strong with their fingers strength. Um, they might have cerebral palsy or 
um, you know, as I said, arthritis or something else. And so this is a nice option because what you do is you put the dog's head through, you have to open the buckle and then it widens the gap. And then you put the dog's head through and then you do the buckle up. And then there's a little steel hole here and you would attach the leash to it and then off you go. And um, this I think is in some of the pet stores or you can buy it online. So some of my clients have bought this and this has been quite helpful to them. Now, the best brand of the um, prong collars is um, German made Hemspringer um, brand. It's t the top international brand. However, I have had quite a bit of good success using generic brands too. And during COVID, you know, it wasn't always easy to get the items that we wanted. And so you had to rely on stuff locally in the stores and you just have to find the right tool for the dog. So does a prong work for every dog? No, you know, there's martingales, there's the prongs, there's slip collars, there's transitionals, um, there's uh, the halties, there's, uh, you know, flat buckle collars. There's so many different tools out there on the market. If one tool worked for every single dog you train, then we would only have one option and who knows what that would be, okay? We have e-collars too that can help with people get their dogs reliably off leash and to have that super um, recallability and it help, also helps with obedience. And again, it's understanding the tool, being educated properly on it and knowing how to introduce it correctly. And that's how you're gonna get success moving forward. But this, this video is specifically um, on the um, prong collars. So with the prong collar, again, it's all about teaching the dog, if they move forward, how to release that pressure is by yielding. And you don't need to reef on the dog's neck. You don't have to give quick pops all the time. But you know, in some cases you do have to be a bit more, more assertive, but you're trying to, you know, you can use food, you can use treats, you can use toys to help motivate the dog to work with you. And there's exercises you can do to help you. It's not just about putting this on your dog and trying to go for an ordinary walk. Because if you do that, you can still struggle with a prong on because you haven't taught your dog anything. So you still, you know, really should teach your dog, you know, doing lots of interruptions on your walk, doing sit and down transitions, you know, maybe doing place command along the walk, um, doing circles, serpentines, figure eights, all kinds of things to get the dog to understand that who's walking who here. Are you walking the dog or is the dog walking you? And you know, you need to be able to rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat until the dog is consistent in that behavior to be able to back off of doing exercises. So it doesn't mean you have to do exercises for the rest of your life with your dog, but you have to do exercises to teach your dog how to walk on a leash because again, it's a human concept. It, the dogs don't wake up and all of a sudden know how to do this. You have to teach them. And if you don't teach them, you're going to struggle. And this is only a band-aid solution if you do not teach the dog proper etiquette on the leash because they can still behave and misbehave in other environments and, other, and with different triggers and stuff around. So, you know, it does give you a little bit of more muscle power to kind of control a dog that might be a little bit difficult. Like, you know, if you have a Jack Russell that constantly lunges and barks at dogs while you're trying to train the dog, it might help enable you to get a little bit further with the dog because you've got a bit more support, you know, but again, you still have to teach the dog how to walk nicely on the leash. So with the regular 14 inch prong collar, you'll notice that again, it has a swivel on the top, right? There's no quick release on this. So that means that you can take it apart any, anywhere you want on the collar. Okay. Now, some people struggle with this, but they don't quite understand, and it's okay. So when you are taking these off and on, you're gonna see that there's links here. It doesn't matter whether it's an 18 inch, you know, or a 14 inch, or even a five inch like the other one. What you're gonna do is you're gonna push up, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna push down. So as I'm pushing up, I'm gonna push this down at the same time, and that's all you do. And then putting it back in, you're just squeezing these two little parts here. If you squeeze up here, you're gonna squeeze until the cows come home because it makes this part actually wider. So you wanna kind of squeeze just, just ever so slightly, not very hard, and it's just gonna go right in, and then you're, you're attached again. So that's how you would put it on. You would look at your dog, the dog would be looking directly at you. You would put this apart, you would go up under the dog's chin, right? And you would do it up here, and then you would just travel it so that it's behind the dog's cranium and then behind the dog's ears at the back of the head, okay? And that's how you would use the, the prong collar properly. So, you know, lots of people think that these look like torture devices. 
I love dogs and I'm not in the business of hurting an animal. I absolutely love dogs and I want to be able to help my clients reach their goals. And you know, when I was 10 years old, it took me six months or so to get my dog to learn to heal by using food and treats only. I wasn't able to use these different tools. I also got into competition and at that point when you're doing competition, you cannot have anything on the dog's neck. The dog has to be naked and so they have to know how to heal. They have to know how to obey. They have to know what, what's expected and they have to behave themselves. But these tools are to help people reach their goals. And everyone has different goals. Not everyone wants to compete with their dog. There's a lot of pet dogs out there that people just want to know how to walk their dog properly and just enjoy their walk. And that's perfectly fine. If your goal is to use one of these tools and then at some point eliminate the tool, that's completely up to you. Again, it depends on what your goals are. Does it really matter when you have a pet dog? No, it doesn't matter at all. It depends on your goals. So in order to have a dog come off of a tool, you have to do due diligence, due diligence and you have to practice. There's no way to get around it in order to have the dog move forward. You need to do the, the work that's um, you know, needed in order for the dog to get over the hump of having reactions on leash and to know how to train that dog. And by doing that, you really should have a, a trainer assist you because there's lots of techniques and um, different tips and stuff that we can give you and exercises that help lay things out in a way that the dog can understand. And then you also have support for you as well, okay? So this is just the regular prong collar. I'm actually gonna show the, the 14 inch, I'm gonna show you on Zeus here who's sleeping in the background. Here, Zeus. Oh. So again, what you're gonna do is you're going to undo it. You're gonna come up to the dog under the chin. You're gonna go behind the ears. And then you're going to swivel it and it's gonna go in the middle, okay? And so the swivel part is what the leash gets attached to. And then as, as you walk along, you're just teaching your dog that if you have a little bit of pressure on, the dog starts to learn to go in your direction. And there's lots, like I said before, there's lots of exercises that can help you get there. I'm not showing videos of that right now, but what I'm doing is just talking about the uh, prong collar. And again, you know, the Hem Springer Pinch Collar is, is the top international brand and it does work um, very fluidly and very smoothly. But the generic brands, um, I find I have just as much success with. Um, and you don't need to spend a fortune on the collar because the hem springers are expensive. Do I prefer them? Yep, they're, they're, they're higher quality and they last longer and they're smoother. But the other prong collars can work just as effectively if you're shown how to use them properly, okay? So if anyone has any questions, you can contact Nadine at Good Doggy. It's uh, Nadine at GoodDoggy.ca. You can also go to my uh, website, which is GoodDoggy.ca. Or you can also contact me versus text or email. It's Nadine at GoodDoggy.ca, as I said. Or you can text at 905-429-9177. Okay, so I hope everyone has a great day, and hopefully that was helpful. Take care.